right? It's helping people. It's having a better quality of life, less stress, all these things. So, and that's what, why I wanted to write it down here because this is powerful, right? To remember why we're working so hard, why we're trying to earn this money. So I'm Jessica Weaver. I am a, what I call, retirement advisor, author, financial blogger. Here's my number one best-selling book, Strong Woman, Stronger Assets, How to Raise Your Self-Worth to Raise Your Net Worth. I'll pass it around. We're almost done with the second book that's going to launch in May, Time to Refine. Who has had a point in their life where there's time to refine? Wow. Time to refine how much they're working, time to refine their money, time to refine their mindset, like you said. And now it's going to be more geared towards retirement. But I also have a blog, Not Your Father's Advisor. And I call myself Not Your Father's Advisor because I focus on the most important aspect of your money, your relationship with it. Right? And just like any relationship, it needs some tender love and care, some nourishment, some structure to it, and it needs purpose. Right? And it needs your commitment. It needs your faithful commitment, just like you expect your spouse to be committed to you, right? Your money needs your commitment to it. Okay. And before we get started into the meat of this presentation, I want to share with you a journey that I had. It started in 2017, but mostly about last year. So in 2017, I found out I was pregnant with my daughter, and the next day I committed to writing that book. So I spent 2017 writing a book, getting it launched, getting it number one bestseller, and then about two months later, I called up my dad, because I work with my father, and I said, you need to reschedule some appointments, because I'm in labor. <laughs> <laughs> she came a few weeks early, everything was fine, but I'm like, I'm not going to be able to meet with him right away, just push him out a little bit. I was home with my daughter for about six weeks, then I went back to work, but it was really just about taking care of my current client. So that was the fall. By January, I could not wait to get going again. I had my new book, I had all these ideas, new workshops, a new program. My Strong Retirement Club was getting launched. And my daughter was settled at daycare. We felt good about her being there. And another thing I started in 2018 was another mentorship with my business coach. It's a six month mentorship, okay? Very, a lot of commitment to it. Part of it is you get an accountability buddy. Because we all need an accountability buddy <laughs> with our life, with our money, with our businesses. So Lisa and I would speak every Monday morning. And part of what we would speak about, we would do, talk about our celebrations, our struggles. But most importantly, we would speak about our truth. So our truth is something that you don't want to admit out loud. Sometimes you don't even want to think about it in your head. Okay. So what do you think mine was? I was a new mom back to work. Balance, yeah. <laughs> Mom guilt and balance, right? Because that guilt when you're away, but then feeling guilty if you're home and you're not focusing on your work. So every Monday morning, balance, balance, balance. And then months later, I said to her, well, can I be honest with you? She's like, well, that's what this is about. It's your truth. And I said to her, I think I have postpartum depression. I always get emotional when I say that out loud, but it was the first time I admitted it out loud, and it scared me, right? Because then it goes back to that mom guilt. You feel like you're, you're failing. I'm feeling as a mom, I'm feeling as a wife, I'm feeling at my job. And that's when I had my first revelation, epiphany, whatever you want to call it. That there are times in our life when we will busy ourselves to death to avoid a real issue going on. Who can think of a time in their life where they distracted themselves, right? From their money, from a relationship, from a job you hate, or something just doesn't feel right. I see it a lot with women and their money. Oh, the debt is too scary to deal with, so I'm going to avoid it. Mm -hmm. And by being busy, we think we're being productive, so we must be getting stuff done. We must be moving forward in our life. But then when you look back on your day, well, did I really need to do all that stuff? Right? No, you're just distracted. That's what I was doing. For months, I was distracting myself from the real issue. And then my second revelation came that I can't do this alone, because look where it was getting me. Nowhere. <laughs> I was just distracting myself. I wasn't creating a healthy mindset or a healthy environment. And there are times in our lives when people come into our worlds for a reason. Can you think of a time when you met your best friend and they were exactly what you needed to pull yourself through? A tough time, 
Were you about to give up on dating and you met your husband? <laughs> and we need to embrace these women into our lives. Just like my business, my own business coach, she popped into a LinkedIn messaging. That's why I love LinkedIn. She popped into my LinkedIn messaging. And if she came a year before, a year after, I probably would have ignored it. But something was telling me I needed to connect with this woman. And thank God I did because my world completely changed since meeting her. Just like with Lisa. She helped me pull that out of me so that I could then open up to my husband about what was going on and to get the right help I needed. And the last revelation I want to share with you about this journey is that we can have whatever it is we want, but it takes investing our time and money to get it. Right? That commitment. Just like I needed to invest my time and money with my business coach, it was like investing in myself so that I could have more time and money, better quality time and money. Just like I had to do that with my therapist. Time away from my family and business. I didn't want to do that. But it gave me better quality time on both sides of it. Right? Just like you're committing your time right now, which is awesome. We could all be at home in our comfy, cozy couches and our comfy clothes. But we are here, and this is such an awesome group. There's so much good energy here. I've been doing a lot of the presentations for big meetings, and this is an awesome group, I have to say. And a lot of times people come to me for a quick question. Right? Just like you came today, you probably had something on your mind about money. Or there's a curiosity, or how do I get more of it? How do I earn more money? How do I save it better? How do I become more efficient with my money? And that's what happens. People call me with a quick question. I call them surface questions. Right? It's something on the surface going on. Just like I knew something was off, I needed some balance in my life, but we all know it is something so much deeper, right? We got roots to these problems, to these surface questions. Something is really real going on in our lives, okay? And that's my job when women come to me. And they need to feel safe when they come to me. They need to be able to be vulnerable with me just like I was just vulnerable with you. Because if we just answer the quick question, the surface question, is it really going to get fixed? Mm -hmm. It's like putting a Band-Aid on it. Right? It might work for a little bit, but it's not going to be sustainable. It's not going to be the real change you're looking for. Okay. So I had one woman. She called her office. Let's call her Jane. And Jane had a quick question. When should I take my pension? Okay. Pretty good quick question. And I said to her, Jane, don't you think we get that one question answered? The floodgates are going to open up more questions. Because that's what happens, right? We have a few questions up here, and then it goes down here. She goes, oh, it clicked for her. That's why I'm so overwhelmed by this one question. And I could tell she was overwhelmed. She called her office about four or five times to get it answered. So I said, okay, Jane, why don't you come in for a strategy session? That's where we look at where are you today, where do you want to be, how do we get you there? And part of when we look at where are you today is what got you there? What are these patterns in your life? What are these things you're doing with your money that got you to where you are today? So for Jane, when she was growing up, she had a brother. Only the brother was pushed to get good grades at school, pushed to make money, taught about money, pushed to go to college. So when Jane earned $30, she would spend $40. And then what do you think happened when she got married? She, she passed the money management burden on to her husband. But that didn't turn out too well for her. Because she found herself divorced, five kids, no income, in foreclosure. Pretty scary. And then because she still didn't know what to do with money, she spent the next 25 years in debt. 25 years with this fear of how am I going to put a roof over my kid's head? How am I going to put food on the table? To the point where she would throw her bills up in the air, whichever one she would catch, she would pay. That type of fear. Can you feel that fear? <laughs> Right? Think of a scary time that you've had with your money. That type of fear. So what was going on? What was the root of the issue? Well, she had this belief deep down that she didn't deserve to make money, that because she didn't know about money, she was never going to have money, that she was always going to be in debt. And that's what happened. Jane came to me, and she was overspending by about $2,000 a month. So the pension question... We couldn't even get that answer. We had to fix what was really going on in her life. And by some of the stuff I'm going to teach you today, I taught her, and within six months, she was even and starting to save money. 
So if you think about that, that's a $24,000 swim for her. So do you think it was worth her, it for her to invest her time and money and herself and her future? Yeah. So what are some of our goals with money? I heard security and I heard freedom. Shoes. <laughs> Shoes security, yeah. So a lot of times it's freedom, security, which we said. What about stability? Yeah. Would that feel nice? <clears throat> right? We all like having some stability in our life. Right? So these are exactly what we're going to hit today. Does that sound good? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Let's start with stability. This is one of my favorites. A lot of people don't think about it immediately. What helps us feel stable in our life? Consistency. Consistency, yes. Kind of knowing what's going to happen Certainty. next. Routine. Routine. Oh, really good. I call it structure. Structure to our day. How many times do we love having structure to our day? Don't you find you're more efficient? Mm -hmm. And so you sit down and you have a million things to do and you don't know, okay, I'm going to lump this stuff together for marketing, this stuff together for sales, this stuff together for my kids, right? We're so much more efficient. I think about it when you go on vacation and it's so exciting because you don't have to wake up on time, you can work out whenever, you can eat whenever you want to, but by the end of the vacation, you cannot wait to get back into your routine. <laughs> kids love routines. Kids love having structure. Our money loves having structure. But a lot of times, we don't really give it much structure. We don't give it much thought. Or, okay, I'm expected to save X amount of my 401k. I'm expected to buy this type of house. I'm expected to save this much for my kid's college fund. But is there any rhyme or reason to it? Is there any purpose behind it? Usually, it's just what we're expected to do, so we do it or what we think we're supposed to do. But for me, every dollar needs to have its purpose in your life. Right? We feel good when we have a purpose in our life. Same thing with our money. So I'm going to share a story about Aunt Dee Dee. So Aunt Dee Dee came to me for a quick question. Okay, what should I do with my IRA? She had about 500000 saved up. She wanted to retire within 10 years. Aunt Dee Dee was dealing with some health issues, so she knew it had to be 10 years at the, the latest. She, wanted to get a, she needed to get a new car. She also needed to put some money into her house because it was start, the bathroom towels were starting to crack, paint was peeling. But Aunt Dee Dee had this deep-rooted belief, because right, it's not about that quick question, right? It's the deep-rooted belief that because she earned more money than her siblings and nieces and nephews, she didn't have any kids of her own, but because she earned more than them, that she always had to take care of them. So when Aunt Dee Dee came in to sit with me for a strategy session, we were going over, well, what happens if Aunt Dee Dee runs out of money? Oh, we're all screwed then. Right? Then nobody's take, being taken care of, and then her nieces and nephews will be taking care of her, but they don't have, won't have money. Okay? So it finally clicked for her, well, I need to reset my mindset around money, that it's not selfish to take care of myself first, because it allows me to keep giving to others without the guilt, without the fear of jeopardizing my own future, and consequently their future. Right? But what Aunt Dee Dee was doing, and this is what I see a lot of people doing, all the income comes into one account, and then every bill gets paid from there. That's not about right. Mm -hmm. There might be two accounts, but there's no real purpose behind why there's two accounts. It's just some stuff goes there, some stuff goes there. Well, that's what was happening with Aunt Dee Dee. She'd save up enough money to redo her bathroom, and then the kids would call, Aunt Dee Dee, Aunt Dee Dee, I need money, and whoosh, the money's gone. And then she's left with nothing. So what we did was starting to give her money different accounts, right? We had a bathroom account. We had a car account. And don't worry, we had an Aunt Dee Dee account. <laughs> I did tell her she couldn't give it at all. But what do you think happens when the kids call in the Aunt Dee Dee account isn't full yet? So like she's got to say no or not yet. And what do you think is going to happen when the kids hear no a few times? They might stop calling as much. They might start thinking through their purchases. Right? I think she bought the one kid a, a new car three times. 
So this Aunt Dee Dee issue was costing her about $20,000 a year of money that she really needed to pay her health 